This has been a most difficult term at the court. This difficulty is underscored by the sudden and tragic passing of my colleague and friend, Justice Antonin Scalia. I think it is fitting to say a few words about him, particularly here. Many will focus on his intellect and his legal prowess. I do not demure in either case. But there is so much more to the man than that. When I think of Justice Scalia, I think of the good man whom I could instinctively trust during my first days on the court and those were challenging days. He was in the tradition of the South of my youth, a man of his word, a man of character. Over the almost 25 years that we were together, I think we made the court a better place for each other. I certainly know that he made it a better place for me. He was kind to me when it mattered most in those early days. He is and will be sorely missed. As the years since I attended college edged toward a half century, I feel a bit out of place talking with college students or recent graduates. Much it's, must it much has changed since I left college in 1971. Things that were once considered firm have long since lost their vitality, and much that seemed inconceivable is now firmly or universally established. Hallmarks of my youth, such as patriotism and religion, seem more like outliers if not afterthoughts. So in a sense, I feel woefully out of place doing this or any commencement. My words will perhaps be, perhaps be more of a vintage nature than currently in content, than current in content. Words actually matter, not a current news speak. I admit to being unapologetically Catholic unapologetically patriotic, and unapologetically a constitutionalist. In my youth, we had a small farm. I am convinced that the time I spent there had much to do with my firm resolve to never, never farm again. <laughs> Work seemed to spring eternally, like the weeds that consumed so much of our time and our lives and our efforts. One of the constantly conveyed messages was our obligation to take care of the land and to use it to produce food for ourselves and for others. If there was to be independence, self-sufficiency, or freedom, then we had to first understand, accept, and then discharge our responsibilities. The latter were the necessary, but not always sufficient, antecedents or precursors of the former. The only guarantee was that if you did not discharge your responsibilities, there could be no independence, no self-sufficiency, no freedom, no crops. In a broader context, we were obligated in our neighborhood to be good neighbors so that the neighborhood would thrive. Whether there was to be a clean, thriving neighborhood was directly connected to our efforts and to our conduct. So, there was always, to our way of thinking, a connection and a relationship between the things we valued most and our personal obligations or efforts. There could be no freedom without each of us 
discharging our responsibilities. That was first and foremost. In that context, when we heard the words, duty, honor, country, no more needed to be said. But that is a bygone era. 